all these teenage girls that were reading all these books from the library that I, I just didn't want them putting those really evocative romance stories in their heart. And so they challenged me to write a wholesome, gentle, true love story about an ordinary girl. And I started the Christy Miller series. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so glad you are with me today because we have a really exciting podcast for you this week. We're talking about girly things. We're talking about dating and future husbands and preparing our girls for what's next. What what comes next? What comes after high school? And for many of them, that's going to look like marriage and becoming wives and moms. And so I have two friends here with me today, Trisha Goyer, who many of you are familiar with, and Robin Jones-Gunn, who many of you maybe are familiar with. She is a new friend to me, and I'm super excited to have these ladies with me this week as we talk about these important topics. Um, As you know, the Schoolhouse Rocked Ministry is all about homeschooling and family discipleship. And so we talk about homeschooling, but we talk a lot about raising kids and what does it look like to raise our kids to become godly adults who will succeed in life. And if you've listened to the podcast for any length of time, you know that when I say succeed, I don't mean, will they make lots of money and have a great job and a big house and fancy cars and big vacations? I mean, are they living their lives in a way that pleases and honors the Lord? And so this podcast this week, I'm so excited about it because as you know, I have two girls and they're 12 and 17 years old. And we are just in the thick of this, just the thoughts of, of raising them to enter into life with strong relationships and strong marriages. And we've been praying for their future husbands since the day we found out that they were girls still in the womb. And I mean, just fervently praying that God would be raising up godly men for them and raising them up to be godly women. And so Trisha and Robin wrote this book. It's called Before You Meet Your Future Husband. And it's a it's a devotional book. And it's so good. I've really loved this book. And going through it. Um, and just the the wisdom that is poured through this and the scripture that is poured through this book is amazing. So we're going to talk about this topic this week. But before we get started, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program so that you don't have to teach math to your kids yourself, go to ctcmath.com and try them out for free. ctcmath.com. Well, Trisha and Robin, welcome to the podcast. I am so excited for this conversation this week. Um, Introduce yourselves to us very quickly. Tell us who you are. um, And and then we're going to get into this conversation. We're going to dig deep this week. So Trisha, I'll let you go first. Okay. Well, I'm Trisha Goyer. I've been married to John for 33 years and we have 10 kids. So from the ages of 33 all the way down to 12, um, we have three biological kids and then God called us to adoption. So then we adopted seven kids and basically started all over again. And I've homeschooled all the way through. So from the time Corey was about four years old, uh, we started homeschooling. I'm still homeschooling. Uh, my youngest is going to be in seventh grade this year. So I'm like, okay, wow. we're we're seeing an end. I've been homeschooling for like 29 years. Like this oh my is goodness. a long time. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, we've done that. I go to curriculum fairs. I'm like, done that, done that, tried this, love this. I mean, we just have done it all. Um, I also write books. I've written ha- over 80 books that are published. And then I have a, podca- a couple podcasts and that's my life. Homeschooling, writing, podcasting, and having fun with my family. Oh, man, I love it. I love it. How about you, Robin? Tell us about you. My husband and I have been married for 46 years, and we have a son and a daughter, and they are both married, and we have four grandkids. Um, Both of our kids are in full-time ministry. I have been writing for 40 years, which was a beautiful career to have. The Lord just kind of brought it to me. I didn't seek it, but to be able to be home with our kids and write stories that really mattered what really opened up the writing adventure was when my husband was a youth pastor for 25 years. And we had all these teenage girls that were reading all these books from the library that I, I just didn't want them putting those really evocative romance stories in their heart. And so they challenged me to write a wholesome, gentle, true love story about an ordinary girl. And I started the Christy Miller series. And those girls in the youth group helped me. The first book we uh, was published by Focus on the Family after 10 rejections from different publishers. Wow. And then after that, 
the letters told us girls were giving their life to the Lord. They were making really good decisions about following Christ. And so we, uh, I was invited to continue writing the whole series. So there's now 40 books about these characters uh -huh. and just taking them through their college years, married years, and onward to establish role models. So I've written um, over 100 books and uh -huh. been um, able to just gift from God, be able to travel all over the world and speak. Um, uh, that's plenty. It's not, it's not quite yeah. as many kids as Trisha, but I feel like from all the kids, because <laughs> well, I just heard from a girl that had been in our youth group years ago, and she said, thank you for helping me make the most important decisions of my uh, life from the teachings that Ross gave us, from your books that led me to give my life to Christ. And then as I've continued to read your books, they've discipled me through the years. Uh, so... That's pretty great way to. That's amazing. And it's so funny, the two of you, as I was reading through your bios, you know, you read Trisha's and she's written over 80 books. And I'm like, how is that even possible? <laughs> I, I can't even wrap my mind around writing one book. And then I get to Robin's and she's like, I've written over a hundred books. And you guys both just say it so nonchalantly. I just, you know, in my spare time, I write books. And so I'm really glad that you took the time in your, you know, busy book writing schedules to write this book. Um, I think this topic is so very important because mm -hmm. we live in a day and age where our girls are just bombarded mm -hmm. with ever, I mean, from social media to movies, to TV, to the books that they're reading that maybe are not books written by Trisha or Robin, <laughs> um, that really kind of glamorizes dating and marriage in a, in a way that's so unrealistic and I know that for myself, I went into marriage this way. I had this idea. Mm -hmm. It was almost kind of this like Disney princess idea of what marriage was going to look like. And I wasn't really prepared. I, I married young. I was 20. We had just gotten, um, well, we, we got engaged at 19 and we had just turned 20 when we got married. Mm -hmm. And I was so ill-equipped to be a wife. And I just, I had no idea. I, I never really thought much through well what marriage was and, and what it was going to take to have a successful and happy and God honoring marriage. It was more of kind of a fairy tale for me. Like, you know, here's my Prince Charming. He was in the military. He swept me off my feet. He proposed to me only two months after we started dating. We got married a few months later and that was just planning the big wedding. And it was all about the wedding and it was about being married, but none of it was about the marriage. And I didn't really focus so much on how do I prepare myself for a, a lifetime of being in a successful God honoring marriage. And I feel like I'm still learning. We've been married 28 years and I'm still learning how to do that. And so I'm so grateful for books like this that will help my teens as I guide them into preparing themselves for this. So talk about what really inspired the two of you. And I don't know who wants to go first, but what inspired you to write this book before you meet your future husband? Well, Trisha and I had written a book a number of years ago called Praying for Your Future Husband. And the way that came about was we, she and I were together at a writer's gathering and we had a break in the afternoon and we were out by the pool and the lounge chairs and I'm journaling away like, Lord, what do you want for me to write next? Trisha fell asleep in the chair next to me and <laughs> yes, she all of a sudden <laughs> woke up and popped her head up and said, we should write a book together. And I said, okay, what should we write? She said, I have no idea. <laughs> and then she went back to sleep and I just wrote in my journal, ah, Trisha says we should write a book together. <laughs> and then not long after that, I was invited to go to Brazil where uh, my husband and I went because the Christy Miller books had been translated into Portuguese. And I was <sighs> invited to speak in the schools and churches on a three week adventure, it really was. One of the schools I went to Ross and I walked in and all these teenage girls started screaming. I asked the translator, what's going on? And he said, they think you're a rock star. <laughs> like they think you're Christy and Todd from the books, but in real life, like all grown up. So when I stood in front of the group of girls, they were so just Brazilian girls are so <laughs> enthusiastic. And uh, as a translator to ask them to ask me a question. And when they did, the first girl that popped up said, so all the girls in Brazil are reading your books. They're giving their lives to Christ. They're making good choices, but there is a problem. 
none of the boys in Brazil are reading these books. What should mm. we do? Just give up our standards? And I know it was the right answer because like the, when you know the Holy Spirit's like nudging you, I said, okay, girls, this is it. This is your work. You pray, you get on your knees and fight like a girl. You pray that God's spirit mm. would do a new work in the girls of Brazil, uh, I mean, the, the boys of Brazil, and that they would draw, to be drawn to Christ and just live lives of integrity. And so these girls were so quiet. And then at the end, they lined up by the door, arm in arm, and told me through the translator, we are the girls of Brazil. We're going to pray for the boys of Brazil. They won't mm. even know what hit them. And they have... Uh, they had set up a prayer meeting with the principal every Friday after school in that cafeteria. And I have still heard from those girls over the years and how God answered those prayers. So that was the first motivation that this we need to pray and we need to mm -hmm. teach this next generation of girls how to pray because both Trisha and I prayed for our future husbands coming from completely different backgrounds. So then this book, and then there were some other great things Trisha might talk about and how that first book came about. But then that we always knew there needs to be one before you even meet your future husband. Like, what does God want to do in your life, in your mm -hmm. heart? So we kept putting the pieces together until it was time to publish this book. And we, we could not be more excited that it's mm -hmm. finally out there because it's a message we've been sharing when we meet with young women. But now it's in book form. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Trisha and Robin. Uh, Trisha, talk to us about your side of this. So we heard Robin's side and I love that story. What drew you to writing this book? So it's so amazing. She shared the story about us at the pool. And then there's, and so we were still thinking like, what do we write about? And she had this experience. It's still like, hadn't gone off. Like this is the topic. And then she came to speak in Montana where I lived at the time. And we were doing a conference together and we were staying at this condo and our hot tub didn't work, which is like the super spiritual moment. Our hot <laughs> tub didn't work. Um, you know, poolside, I've, I've seen a, a little common thread here. So we went to this other location to go to the hot tub. And they, the owner said, now the property manager is going to meet you. He has his family with them. He'll meet you up there and help you get in. We get in and I was parking the car. There's snow outside. Robin walks in first and I walk in and this young woman's there and she goes, oh my goodness, it's you. And she saw me and come to find out a couple of years prior, I was speaking at, at a few hours away at this different women's retreat. And she had come in and she had um, just found out she was pregnant she was going to have an abortion. And I gave my testimony that day and I said, I was a 17 year old girl and I was pregnant with my son and I, my boyfriend was out of the picture and I started praying for my future husband. So, you know, even if you think like you've messed up, you've, you've walked away from God, that God can't use you. I prayed for my future husband and he brought me John, who's been amazing. And we, you know, he's been there since Corey was a tiny baby and God has just had this wonderful story. And she's like, because you said that. And I talked to her afterwards. She goes, um, I started praying for my future husband. And she says, and this is my son, Toby. And this is my husband, Dave. Uh -huh. And like, it was just this moment. And that's, the, I think that's really when Robin and I realized like, okay, she had this experience in Brazil and they're like, yeah. we're going to pray. And this young woman said, I'm going to pray. And she chose life. And she chose like, uh -huh. even though her story, she, she hadn't done everything right, which is important. This is both sides, either for both praying for your future husband and before you meet your future husband, you know, we don't expect that every young woman who picks us up has a close relationship relationship with God has always made the right choices. Like I made sure. a lot of wrong choices. And so it's saying like, God has a good plan for you. You can turn to him. He can use you. And then let's look at your heart. Let's look at those things that all of us, we have struggles. We have thought patterns that maybe we need to turn over to God. We have um, hurts in our heart. Maybe it's things we've done. Maybe it's things that have been done to us. And so it's really either, you know, also praying, but also before that, before you meet your future husband, before you even get there, what's going on in your heart? What influences are in your life? And let's talk about those things. Yeah. I love that part of this book and that, I mean, kind of from the very beginning of it, both of you really, um, share the gospel mm -hmm. and point these girls to Jesus as you're asking them questions throughout the book, 
to make them really think not just about their relationship with their future husband, but what is your relationship look like with the Lord? And so it's so cool how you've done that because it's, you know, I don't know that many girls would pick up a, a book about what is your relationship with the Lord look like and answer those questions, but you've tied those two things together. And it really is so relevant to this topic of preparing our girls mm -hmm. for what their future husbands will be like, what their future marriages will be like. And, you know, it's, it is a tough thing because we can't make the decisions for our kids that, that we want them to make. And I know both of you, of course, have experienced that with having grown kids. And it's one of the things I'm realizing now with my, my oldest is I can't force her to make the decisions that I want her to make or that I would make for her. She's going to have to make these decisions on her own. All I can do is help guide her into doing those things. And so, um, at the same time, part of my job as a, as her mom is to help her recognize maybe what some of those misconceptions might be that she might have about, you know, relationships and what that looks like. So as you have studied this topic and you've talked to countless young women and, and, you know, older women, what are some of the most common misconceptions that you have found that young women have when it comes to um, preparing for marriage and, and, and what relationships would look like before marriage? Yeah, well, I have six unmarried daughters right now. So this is like very relevant. <laughs> Talk about yeah. that, re that research is all yes. in my house. Well, you know, three of them still live at home. Three of them live outside the house. But they're, you know, so that's still those constant conversations. Yeah. But really, they are being raised in a time like where there's all these romance, romantic little reels. And there's these yeah. proposals. And there's these uh, little how how you need to find the one. I mean, these short little 15 second 30 uh -huh. second, one minute clips. Um, yeah. One of my daughters who's 20 now, she told me a couple years ago, she's like, if my husband does not cry when I walk down the aisle on my wedding day, I'm going to turn and walk out. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this, first of all, if that is like your mindset, do not get married. But second right. of all, like, we're talking about a marriage. We're not talking about that right. moment that's captured in a reel. And so mm -hmm. there's, they're just getting fed this over yeah. and over and over again. So really it's, it's the conversation of, well, what is marriage and what do you need to do to prepare and what type of guy are you looking for? And I have these conversations all the time. You know, we need to be working on our hearts. We need to have this close relationship with God. And the thing that I get from my girls and even from other moms I talk to, they say, well, I'm seeking God just like those girls in Brazil, but I don't, I don't know that there would be this guy out there. So I really don't trust. And so it's saying, no, if God knows you and loves you and has good plans for you, he also knows the type of person that you can be in ministry with, or you can mm -hmm. serve together or have the yep. same desires and talents. Like he has a plan there. And as you're seeking him, and as that young man is seeking him, then it's going to come together. Now, our 18 year old just a couple of weeks ago has got her first boyfriend. Um, and he's an international guy that works at the same restaurant as her. He's a Christian and he makes sushi. And I'm like, okay, Florentina, all these times that you said, there's not going to be a guy out there. I'm like, he brought you someone from a different country who loves Jesus and makes sushi. And makes like, sushi. I mean, it make be sushi, than which is her favorite thing. <laughs> I'm like, See? And, and, yeah. And so it's like, we don't even know if that's going to be the guy, but it's just so sure. it's just that reminder that God knows you and he knows your heart. Mm -hmm. And let's just work on preparing ourselves and preparing our minds and our hearts and be doing the things that he's already given us the talents and the dreams in our own life. And so let's, let's set about doing those things as we approach these thoughts of marriage, instead of the reels, instead of the quick little things yeah. that all this, the world has given you these tips. Yeah. You know, you mentioned serving together. And that's one of the things that I tell my girls is mm -hmm. when you look for your future, and I shouldn't even say look for, that's not the right way to say, because it's not like they're going to go on a hunt for them. But you know, <laughs> as you're praying for your future husband, you want someone who you can serve the Lord with together, mm -hmm. because if you're stronger serving God together, there's no better union than that. And Garrett and I, my husband and I are, are blessed to be able to do ministry together full time. I mean, it, it, I never would have imagined that we could do this. And it still blows my mind sometimes. Um, and not that it's wrong. You know, if your husband has a job outside of the home or does something different, that's that's not the thing. But are you still able to somehow together as a couple impact yes. God's kingdom? And that I think is the best thing. And so, if, yeah. you know, as you're looking, find someone who you can serve the Lord with passionately together. Um, and we'll talk more about that, but we are out of time right now. So um, we will come back on Wednesday. We're going to talk more about this. 
Um, the book is called Before You Meet Your Future Husband. And you guys, it is fantastic. If you have girls of any age, um, I think it's it's geared more towards kind of teen the teens, you know, preteens and teens. Um, as uh, I would say that, right? Yeah, is that what you, right. Okay. Um, but I would say even if you have elementary aged girls, this is a book that you can get in to kind of get your mindset as a mm -hmm. mom prepared for the conversations that you're going to have with your girls, because the questions, if you have little girls, the questions are going to start coming from some of them at a very young age. And so this helps to kind of prepare you as a mom to answer some of those questions for your girls. So we'll put a link to the book in the show notes. Um, Trisha, Robin, thank you for being with me today. We'll be back on Wednesday to talk more about relationships and preparing our girls for these things. If you've not yet left a review for this podcast, would you please do that? Let us know how this podcast has impacted you and let others know how it's impacted you. Uh, we would really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to share, subscribe, and like this video. And also if you're on YouTube and you're watching this, we have lots of new swag. Here's one of our t-shirts and on the back of it, this one is from Homegrown Generation. On the back of it, it's got the Homegrown Generation logo. Uh, but we've got lots of super cool swag on our YouTube channel. So you can click on that link and find that. That's a great way to support the ministry. Thank you guys for being with us. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Education is discipleship. And this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children.